Hi all, I am Agnes Meenu, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science. Today in this video, I will be discussing about uh, uh, the concepts of constructors and destructors in C++. So first we will see what are constructors. So a constructor is a special member function whose function is to uh, initialize the objects of its class. A class will be having data members and member functions. Data members are nothing but they are uh, uh, variables for storing the data and they have functions, functions for performing different different tasks. So, constructor is one of the uh, functions which is actually special. It is actually a member of class and it is special because it is having the name as same as that of the class name. It is actually a member of the class and it, uh, constructor is a function but the function is having the same name as that of the class. So, this function, this constructor is invoked or this member function is called whenever the objects of this class is uh, created. Whenever we create object of this particular class where the constructor is created, that particular constructor or the special member function is invoked. So, it is called constructor because it constructs the values for the objects or the data members of its class. It actually initializes the data members in the class. So, uh, we will see how a constructor is declared inside the class. So, we have a class called, this is an example program. Uh, the, uh, we have a class called integer and we have two data members that is two variables m and n and in public section we have uh, the constructor declared that is here you can see the constructor is having the same name as that of the class name that is our class name is integer and this function is having the same name as that of the class name. So integer void is the constructor and the constructor is defined outside the class specification. The, so here is the definition of the constructor. We have defined the constructor inside the function. Uh, we are just initializing uh, the values of the data members that is both the data members m and n are initialized to the value 0. So whenever a class contains a constructor it is guaranteed that an object created by the class is initialized automatically. That is whenever we create an object or when, whenever we have it we are having a constructor it, the objects of the class are automatically initialized. For example uh, in the previous example, we are having a class called integer and uh, int1 is an object of that particular class called integer. So, uh, whenever uh, we create the object int1, it actually not only creates the object int1, but also initializes the data members. In the previous example, we have two data members that is m and n. Whenever we create the int1, which is the object of the class integer, it actually creates the object also initializes the values of the data members m and n to 0. So this kind of constructor which accepts no parameter that is in the example we have seen that uh, the parameter portion was uh, empty that is it returns nothing. So uh, the constructor that accepts no parameter is called default constructor. So this is the first type of constructor that is default constructor. So, next we'll discuss about the characteristics of the constructor. So, first thing is that the constructor should be declared in the public section and the second one is that they are called or invoked whenever the objects of that class is created and the third thing is that normally the functions will be having a return type. Since the constructors are special member functions, they are not having any kind of return types and uh, they are not returning any kind of values. So the fourth point is uh, they cannot be inherited. That is since uh, it is not a class, this is a, uh, just a member function. This cannot be inherited. But derived class functions or the members can access the base class constructor. And like other C++ function, they also can have uh, default arguments. And a constructor, uh, which is a function, cannot be a virtual function. And uh, the object with a constructor cannot be used as a member of a union. And then finally, when a constructor is declared in the class, the initialization of objects are mandatory. So these are the characteristics of a constructor. And now we'll see... <coughs> 
an example uh, of default constructor. Default constructors are nothing uh, but the constructor which accepts no parameter. So this is a simple program which has uh, the constructor and also simply display the name, uh, a name of a particular user. So here we have a class called ABC, our class name is ABC and inside uh, the class we have the data member NM for storing the name and uh, then we have uh, declared the constructor that is in uh, here you can see where the constructor accept no parameter and it has no return type. So inside the constructor that is inside that special member function we are reading the name uh, and storing it in the variable nm and we have another member function display which is to display the name which have we uh, which we have already stored in the variable n so this is a simple program for uh, reading the name and just displaying the name we have already read so inside the main function we have created the object of the class abc at this moment itself uh, the constructor the default constructor is invoked and this uh, reading of the name is performed and uh, after that uh, invoke after calling the constructor the next step is uh, by using the object we are accessing the member function display and the name is actually displayed so when we have created the object obj of class abc the abc uh, constructor is already invoked and we have read the name and stored it in the variable nm and uh, we have already accessed display function which is a member function using the object created and the name is displayed so this is a simple program uh, which implements the concept of default constructor so this is all about a default constructor next we have the second type of constructor called parameterized constructor in the previous uh, case the default constructor was a type of constructor which accepts no parameter but in parameterized constructor as its name implies it actually accepts arguments and parameters hence it is called parameterized constructors so using parameterized constructor we can initialize various data elements or the data members of different objects with different values uh, in the previous case of uh, default uh, constructors, uh, the data members are initialized to zero because uh, they accept no parameter. But in case of parameterized constructor, we can uh, initialize the objects of uh, or we can initialize the data members of different objects with different values because we are having or we are passing different values to the objects. Here now we'll see an example. Uh, here we have a class called integer and we have uh, me uh, data members m and n and uh, here we have inside the public section we have declared our constructor which has the same name as that of the uh, class name. So here you can see uh, this constructor accepts parameters that is uh, two, we have two parameters x and y which is of integer type and which is de defined outside the class that is here you can see uh, integer is a special member function which is of uh, uh, sorry which is a member of the class integer and it accepts two parameters x and y and using the parameters pass that is x and y we initialize the data members m and n i repeat using the parameters passed x and y we initialize the values of the data members m and n so when a constructor has been parameterized the object declaration in the previous case we created the object uh, integer int1 and it worked the constructor was automatically invoked but in this case that kind of statement may not work but here we have to pass the initial values to the constructor and uh, when the uh, object is declared, that is, uh, here we have to pass the initial values of the objects. It can be done in two ways. That is, first one is uh, by calling the constructor explicitly and the second one is uh, calling the constructor implicitly. We will see this and understand this concept with the help of an example. The example is given. Here again we have a class called integer and two data members m and n and in the public section we have declared the parameterized constructor integer which accepts two parameters int which is of integer type 
So it is not uh, defined inside the class. Uh, here we have another member function called display that is to just display the values of the data members m and n. So uh, outside the class we have uh, defined the constructors that is uh, the statement means that integer is a special member function which is of which is a member of the class integer and it accepts two parameters that is to be uh, two parameters are passed x and y are passed and using the uh, parameters passed x and y we actually initialize the values of the data members m and n inside the main function now the first method is implicit call that is we create the object int1 which is of type integer and pass the values 0 and 100 implicitly to the constructor. I repeat we, we are creating the object int1 which is of type integer and passing the values 0 and 100 implicitly to the constructor. And the second method is explicit call. Here we are creating a uh, object integer in 2 which is of type integer and we are passing the values 25 and 75 explicitly to the constructor. So while uh, displaying the objects, uh, when we display the objects using the int1 object that is uh, we created the object int1 for passing the values implicitly. So when we access the display function using int1 the values of the m and n will be 0 and 100 and while we access the display function using integer 2 that is we integer 2 or in 2 was created for explicitly calling the constructor so the values of the uh, m and n uh, by accessing the display function uh, using the int 2 will be 25 and 75 respectively so this is a simple program that implements the concept of parameterized constructor and now the last category of the constructor is copy constructor. Copy constructor is actually used to declare and initialize an object from another object. Actually, in the previous cases and all, we actually pass the initial values to actually initialize the data members. But here we are using an object to initialize another object. We'll see the process of initialization. Here we are initializing the data members using another object and this process is known as copy initialization and uh, the copy constructor is having the general prototype like this class name and inside the parenthesis we have class name ampersand and the object. We will see the, this with the help of an example. Here we have a class called A and inside the class we have data member X and uh, we have all, uh, declared a parameterized constructor uh, which accepts a parameter a only one parameter a and this uh, pass parameter is used to initialize the data member x and now again we have another constructor which is a copy constructor and here you can see the prototype the class name ampersand and the object i is the object created for this class and uh, using the object we are initializing the data member. Here you can see we are using an object for uh, updating the value of the data member. And inside the main function you can see first we are creating an object a1 which is of type a and uh, we are passing a value to the parameterized constructor that is 20 is passed to the parameterized constructor. So whenever a1 is created parameterized constructor is invoked and uh, x is now updated with the value 20. Using the uh, object a1, we are updating the value of x uh, which is uh, which comes under the object a2 that is a2 is passed to update the value of x which is associated with the object a2. So uh, while we display the value of x which is associated with the object a2, it will display the same value as that of the uh, x value which is associated with the first object because we are passing a1 to the object a2 for updating the value of the data member. So hence uh, it is clear from this example that we are using an object to initialize the data member and we are passing the object to update the another object. So this is a simple example that implements the concept of copy constructor. And now the next concept is destructor. So a destructor as its name implies 
it is actually used to destroy the uh, objects that are created using constructor. We actually constructed the value using constructor and that we will be destroying the values that is constructed by the constructor using destructor. So like a constructor, destructor is also a member function whose name is same as that of the class name. But it is actually a small difference is that the function name is actually preceded by a till sign. Here in this example, previous example, our class name was integer. So the destructor will be having the same name of a same name as that of the class name, but it will be preceded by a till sign. So this is an example for the destructor. So destructor will be uh, having no arguments and it does not have any return value and it will be uh, invoked automatically whenever it completes, whenever our program completes its execution. So it is actually a good practice to declare the de uh, destructor because it actually frees the memory space uh, for future use. So we'll see an example for the destructor. Here we have a class called demo and in the private section we have two data members, a num1 and a num2 and in public session we have declared our constructor which is a parameterized constructor and we are displaying like uh, inside the constructor and we are updating the uh, value of data members num1 and num2 using the values passed uh, in the parameterized constructor and we have another uh, sorry another uh, member function called display and inside the display function we are just displaying the values of the data members num1 and num2 and inside and we, we have also defined the destructor that is to just uh, show like uh, there is a statement inside the destructor statement that is inside the destructor uh, or else uh, the demo destructor demo uh, will be working like it just frees the memory save, uh, space that is actually allocated for the constructor so inside the main function we have created an object obj1 which is of a, a type demo and we actually passes two values implicitly to the parameterized constructor that is the values are 10 and 20 and 10 and 20 are used to update the values of the data members uh, num1 and num2 and we actually access the member function display by using this obj1 object and we'll, the output will be like this inside the constructor num1 is equal to 10 and num2 is equal to 20 so after execution of this program the destructor will be invoked and we'll be displaying the uh, statement like inside destructor because only after the execution of the program the destructor will be invoked so this is an example that implement the concept of uh, destructor uh, so that is all about i uh, sorry uh, that is all about constructors and destructors i hope it is clear thank you